Hi pet lovers, thanks for joining Gino's Grooming Channel. Today our subject is gonna be on lifts and holds for small dogs. So thank you so much for joining and thank you for everyone who has subscribed. If you haven't subscribed and you wanna be notified when we do our holds and lifts for our large dogs, go ahead, click that bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as that comes out. Um, what we're gonna be doing is showing you the proper way to lift a dog for certain procedures and grooming and how to hold them for certain procedures and grooming. Um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and split it into sections. So you can go ahead and jump ahead. I'm gonna index for you um, all of the sections and different holds that we uh, demonstrate for you today. So you can go ahead and jump to the section that is applicable to what you need to hold or lift your small dog. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with lifting a dog. I'm gonna meet you guys on the ground floor. I'm gonna show you some lifts for your small dog. Okay, so pretty much the regular way that norm normally we pick up a dog is, okay, come on, buddy, come on. They go ahead and we lift them up by their armpits. Now not every dog can be lifted up in this way because we have our special needs babies, our older babies. So I wanna show you that a proper lift for a dog, come here, sweetheart, is you take your dominant hand, okay, and you wanna go ahead and support them under their body. So you, when you go ahead and lift, you go ahead and have them close to your body. And from there, you can go ahead and lift the pet. Now this way, I'm not putting any duress on his armpits. I'm keeping the back straight, especially if we have special needs babies, we don't wanna go ahead and stretch them up too much. So this is a really nice, safe way to go ahead and hold them. So what I just showed you is to pick up a friendly dog, a dog that doesn't mind getting picked up. If you're working in a salon, sometimes you encounter dogs that don't like to get picked up and they're gonna go ahead and snap at you. So I wanna show you some tips and tricks that can keep you safe um, while picking up a dog that might be a little snippy. So let's go ahead and start down here again. Here we are. So let's say we have a slip lead on a dog, right? And this is how we get him. And this dog is trying to bite. This one is just trying to bite the slip lead. Um, what we can do, is go ahead, same technique, so he's trying to snap. Same technique, lift, but this way I'm controlling more of his neck and throat with the slip lead. There is a towel technique as well. So if we've got a dog that's biting and we have to lift him up, I secure them, make sure that they are here. And what I will do is go ahead and get a towel around them this way, okay. This way now, if we have a towel, it's a very nice way to secure a pet hold him, lift him up, and then go ahead and get him ready for the grooming table or wherever you need to go ahead and put him. Now I wanted to take a moment and talk about a way we can do this for folks that have either disabilities, bad backs, bad knees, maybe they're elderly. So I wanted to bring in a chair. Um, so for folks that can't lean down, we're gonna do the same exact principle, right? Taking your dominant hand, your dominant arm, under the chest of the dog, and then with your arms, you lift up, Right, and now you can go ahead from a seated position and stand up with your dog. Always making sure you use your arms and your knees, never your back. And then you can go ahead and start the grooming process. Now the next hold I'm gonna show you is um, a hold for nails. And this is something that grooming students or grooming assistants learn to do for groomers uh, while they're doing nails for a dog. And what that is, of course you've got phase one, which is you've just got a dog that's a little iffy for nails, little jumpy, not really being aggressive or anything like that. And the hold is just to have a one person go ahead and keep the dog's head and face calm, okay, with open palms, while the other person goes ahead, lifts up and does the nails. So this is just a nice kind of level one where someone's just helping, keeping the dog calm while their nails are getting done. So for phase two, kind of level two of um, dog holds, if you're working with a partner, what's very important, and I'm gonna go ahead and lift up this table for you, is we wanna have your partner, your buddy, whoever's helping you hold the dogs for their nails, if they're biting or they're wiggly and can hurt themselves. Um, the most important thing is that if someone's holding the dog, you go ahead and you give them a hug. So a hug with my non-dominant hand is here, and then my dominant hand, I place the dog and push him toward my shoulder or toward my chest like this. Okay, and this is how we hold dogs for people who are doing nails. So if someone says, can I please get a hold to do nails? This is how you wanna do it because you want your hand to control their head so that they can't snap back and uh, bite your buddy who's doing the nails. 
Now, hopefully you won't encounter any level three dogs, but if you're uh, an aspiring groomer, you may. Um, so some dogs get really, really nervous about their nails. Someone quicked them before in their life, or they just plain don't like it. Um, so sometimes it's dangerous, and obviously if you need to, do a muzzle, put a muzzle on. Um, but I wanna show you also um, that you can go ahead and wrap your dog, okay, um, in a towel and hold them this way for someone to go ahead and do their nails. Um, and this way you're still holding the head, but you're also protecting yourself with a little added measure of neck protection and a neck hold with a towel around their, their neck to make sure that they don't snap and bite. Okay, so let's go down his entire body and do every hold associated with each part of the body. I'll start with the tail. Um, so if I'm doing tail work, what's very important, hi buddy, um, is that you support with your non-dominant hand um, your belly right here and this way you can do tail work. Dogs are sometimes a little iffy with tail work so with this non-dominant hand what you get is a really nice way to be able to go ahead grab the tail from behind keeping them up because what dogs like to do if they don't like their tails they'll sit they'll make it really difficult for you but if you need to do a tail trim anything like that or and we'll get to sanitaries in a second this is also how again non-dominant hand holding the tail away and you can go ahead and do your sanitary trim on the rear with your dominant hand with your clipper and since we just did the rear sanitary let's talk about the front sanitary of course for boys and girls it's a little different um, but the principle remains the same in that we need to be able to lift them up usually for our special needs dogs i'm going to show you a different technique for doing that but if I'm doing a front sanitary trim, non-dominant hand, I'm a righty, so I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna go ahead, make sure the dog is standing up if possible, and go ahead, grab their front paws. And this is how I can go ahead and clipper stuff around the belly, okay? Holding their front paws. This is for a healthy young dog that allows you to do that, that has good um, stability in his back legs. Um, just want you to be aware that for older dogs and sanitaries and also for females, there is a leg lift, okay? Now he, this our particular model here, um, doesn't like his leg lifted very much. So he'll go ahead and sit down, which to me is fine, and I go ahead and do the work. But sometimes, if you really do need them to get up, support belly with non-dominant hand, go ahead in there and find a way so that you can hold and get to where you need to get to with your clipper, but always supporting the dog under the belly. Okay, let's move to the rear legs. Let's see how we deal with that. So with rear legs, not only do we have to scissor, we clipper, we also do paw pad work. So dogs need to be secured while you're doing this work. Um, again, always securing under the belly. What I like to do is always give dogs um, notice before I'm coming in there. But what I'm gonna show you is again, we always have to free our dominant hand for whatever work we're doing. So whether clipper, scissor or whatnot. Um, so just make sure you know, support the dog. You can lift with your non-dominant hand and then do the work with your dominant hand, okay? And this applies to both paws. Because I'm a righty, I usually do both of the underwork for these paws from one side. Okay, and now moving over to the front paws, I um, wanna show you some of the techniques for holding. I always push at the armpit. This kind of gives me um, an ability to kind of stiffen that paw, um, stiffen that leg, um, so that way I can go ahead and scissor work, clipper work, whatever I need to do. Okay, let's talk about the face holds. Um, anytime you're working on a dog's face, you wanna make sure that you're securing them well. So you don't wanna ever, ever take your scissors, start working on a dog's face freehand. You never wanna do anything around their head, their eyes, anything like that, just like this. This is a very bad no-no. You always wanna secure them with your non-dominant hand so you can go ahead and do the work. Always making sure that if they move, you remove whatever you're doing. So let's go ahead and see some of the ways you can go ahead and hold for a face. Most typical one is to go ahead and just grab them lightly between index and thumb on their chin. This is a very nice way to manipulate a face, but some dogs cannot tolerate that. So sometimes you have to try different things. Hold them between basically your hand and your thumb, your other fingers, and this way you can go ahead and do certain things that you need to do, whether it's brushing or scissoring or whatnot. In addition, sometimes the dog doesn't like you touching their face at all. Again, don't go near a face without having a good hold. So sometimes you have to take them from underneath their chin and get done what you need to get done. But just holding them lightly under the chin 
but make sure that you have a hold on them so that if they move, you quickly go ahead and move away so that you don't go ahead and get into their eyes. Well, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. Those are the main holds and lifts that I wanted to talk to you today about for small dogs. Remember, subscribe, um, just click that notification bell icon because we will be releasing a hold and lift for large dogs um, so that you can see the differences and if that applies to you. If you guys like this video, please remember to click that thumbs up. Really appreciate your time. We'll see you soon.